something you may not be aware of but I was a Zionist in a way there on Friday the doctors could not diagnose what was wrong with you him you have dropped out of school but you have seen the God of Israel you have have dropped out of school but the God of Israel you have but the God of seen at that place I'm sure that he will heal you I'm that he will heal you So I took him there. Since that day he will got healed. I was speaking about the cell group just to emphasize that we are all members of Zion in a way. He had, since then he has been inspiring us in our calling. Shifted from Kimirong. It had many people some that are still serving with him and others who left ariko yareze abantu benshi but he has nurtured many people mijugujugu myinshi bari ko badutera the stones would be thrown that would be being thrown at us ngo bayitera he the one who took uh, the sacrifice so and received them ruhande. for us we stand aside bakamutera mijugujugu yacu yose and they shoot at him whatever was meant for chane, us chane, especially the the revive the revival ariko ikishimishani What makes me glad is, is that he's never discouraged. He's never complaining. He's never a sorrowful. Yes, Praise Jesus. He who is holy, he who is true. Who has the key of David? He who opens and no one shuts. He who opens and no one shuts. Repeat he who opens and no one shuts. Muri mirongo urwenda ni 9 In 1999 I wanted to go to Australia. No no njya muri Kenya gufata yo visa icyo ge ambassade ya New York. So I went to Kenya because that's where the embassy was. Dari fite ibidoki babyose byuzuye. I had all the documents I needed for a visa. No neho. Kagamo ni ya no nantimef. I think it was in Israel in 1998. I think he was in 1999 because in 1998 I was coming from Israel. No no ngezeyo. When I reached there, tanzi bisabwa byose. I gave all the documents they needed from me. Hanyuma ndategereza. Then I waited. Icyo giye wara depose abwa tegereza iminsi ibiri itatu gasubira. You would drop your document and then wait 2 to 3 days. Subiye ku munsi wa gatatu. I went there on the third day. I was in a very small hotel. Muri za ngongoro de ngara. Muri za ngongoro de sore. Ngorod. Bakitaga Flora Hotel. It was called Flora Hotel. Nari kumwe nundi muntu twahuriye turasengana. I was with someone we had met there we were praying. Namaze gupanga uko nzajya muri Australia mutima wanje uriyo ndarandota nkabona indege yansiza ariko nkayifata kandi urabizi na wifite izo nzosi My whole heart was in Australia I couldn't stop dreaming about Australia I could dream that I was missing my flight You know what happens when you want to travel so bad Ngeze kuri ambassade I reached the embassy Tibigeze baranyakira umusecurité yansaze kumarembiri They didn't even take me in. The security officer phoned me at the gate. Navuza mazina yanje ayitambike envelope kinini. Kirimo amarefi. I gave my name and he gave me an envelope with all the documents with refusals. Sindiya kingwe ngo ninjire. The security officer didn't open for me. He was in a, in a, in a small room and he spoke through a window. Why? The door was closed. The security officer closed and Australia closed for me. Fungwe mbona passeport yanje irimo igikashekera bateraga mu gikasheka ibicara. When I opened I saw my passport and they had stamped in a refusal. No no, nshaka kubaza uyu musiki. I wanted to ask the security officer. Why have they not given me a visa? Aravuga ngo urambaza iki? 
keys. I asked him and he said, what is this? I don't understand any of it. I was given an envelope to give you. And I got angry, frustrated. I said, no. They have refused me a visa. He said, sorry. I'm really sorry. I'm sorry about it. He said, I don't know these things. I'm just a soldier. I'm just a security officer. Don't ask me anything else. I went back to the hotel. And if you can imagine in 1999 to get money to stay in a hotel, you had to fast and pray for the money to stay in a hotel. No, no. So, I went back to the hotel. I was very angry with God. Have you ever been angry with God? <laughs> I was very angry with God. And I thought I was making him pay. <laughs> I said, I'll sleep without praying and I'll eat without praying. I'll punish him. Do you know how last bones act out of spite? So I did that. I slept. Even when a song of praise or worship came, I would rebuke it. I was angry. Around midnight, when you have spent the whole of your life praying, there comes a time when you pray even when you don't want it, but it, it's a habit. I was heartbroken, but I prayed. I knelt down I said, God, I shouldn't be praying. I have, I'm choosing to pray because my heart is forcing me to. They, why have they refused me a visa? And why was it a security officer to give me that envelope? I prayed. Then I went back to bed. I, I just complained and went back to bed. After sleeping, I fell asleep. I saw someone come with another passport. And this person told me from today, you will never, you will never be refused a visa to any country in the world. Then I woke up. I said, I don't know what happened. Came back to Kigali, told my wife that I had I couldn't get a visa. But I had a voice telling me, you will never be refused a visa. I know many of you are struggling with visas. There is a reason why I'm giving this testimony. There is a door that will open and it will never shut. I found a fax message from Switzerland. A young lady we had met in Jerusalem. She was inviting me with my wife that we go visit in Switzerland. No, no. Then I asked, where is the embassy of Switzerland? Half in a diplomat. Near the diplomat hotel, that's ah. where the embassy was. When I reached there, I found doors closed. Security, the security officers told me to come back another day. I went to Arusha, we had a ministry in Arusha. After the conference, I came back. As we were on the flight, 
There was a lady who was seated in the business class. Let me break it down for you. Economy class, business class. Business class people tend to sit in the head of the airplane and people in the economy sit at the back in the tail. I wasn't by the toilet. I was just a little bit ahead of it. There was a white lady in the business she class. She was seated in the business class. She came. She came and sat next to me. Listen. And she told me, I have loved you. And in my head, I was thinking, I wish you could take me in front. Loving me is not anything. She was seated in the business class. Tell the the hostesses to take me in front. I want to feel how it feels to sit in the business class. She kept talking to me. And I didn't know that I didn't know that she was the first council of the Swiss embassy giving visas. She came from the front. Came to sit next to me. Asked me my news. And I didn't know. I don't know how she loved me, but I didn't have a rich biography to share. All I could share was that we have a church, we pray for the nation, that's it. And she told me, have you ever thought of going to Switzerland? And she asked me, have you ever thought of going to Switzerland? I said, I have an invitation. I tried to come to the embassy and the security officers told me that it's not open. And she said, what? Come to see me tomorrow, Tuesday, and I'll, I'll give you the visa. I went. She had called back home in Berlin. Uh, and she said it will take time because I have to recommend you she gave us the visas me and my wife no, no, do so, do so. when we were coming out we went to the American embassy they gave us no. a visa no, 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 no. So, when we left I forgot, sorry no, no, do so. when we left we met a young man. We knew him. You know when you get a visa, you want to tell it to someone. Eh? You, back then, people were not evil-hearted as these days. So when you got good news, you wanted to share with someone. You believe that when you shared good news, people would be happy for you. But it's not the same story today. Okay. Today, hearts have become hot, cold. But this young man hugged me so much. We were together at the embassy. And he said, you've got the visa to Switzerland. Come, 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 come. It was in the evening. Around 5 p.m. They were about to close. He said, do you know? Do you know that the person who gives visas in the Embassy of the Germans is my friend. How can you go to Switzerland and not go to Germany, to Belgium? That person gave me a passport and said, you will never be denied a visa. And it came back to my spirit. So we went. When we entered, the other woman came and hugged this friend. Hugged him. 
And he said, even though you've hugged me, these two are my friends. Give them a visa to Germany. She said, she, she was putting in the visas while we were sitting Back then, we came with two visas. Next day, we got a visa to the U.S. It was the first time they were giving the 10-year visas. We went with my wife. We had Elisha. He was two years. When we reached the embassy, there was an African-American woman. And she said, you've gone to many places. You didn't go with your wife to Israel. As she was saying that, she was giving us visas. But visas are new. She said, these are your visas. Come to collect your passports in the evening. Have you heard what I've said? To this day, I, I don't know what it looks like to apply for a visa. He who has the key of David. When he opens, no one shuts. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let the doors be open for you this evening. Let the doors shut be open. Let the doors shut be open. Hey, hallelujah. 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 Hey. Hallelujah. Woo. May God remember you, remember your children and all your descendants. Because Behold, I place an open door before you and no one can shut it. Sometimes a door will be closed in our lives. When a door is shut, sometimes it can be depending on Satan or God. When you go to the book of Acts 16, verse 6 to verse 10, the Bible says, now when they had gone through Phrygia and the region of Galatia, they were forbidden by the Holy Spirit to preach the word in Asia. After they had come to My Mysia, they tried to go into Bithynia, but the Spirit did not permit them. Sometimes God will close doors. So passing by Mesia, they came down to Troas. And they came and a vision appeared to Paul in the night. A man of Macedonia stood and pleaded with him saying, come over to Macedonia and help us. Now, after he had seen the vision, immediately we sought to go to Macedonia, concluding that the Lord had called us to preach the gospel to them. Eh? There are three doors that shut in my life and it broke my heart. One was shut when I was at the university in 1990. Someone liked me. President Mobutu. Person was related to President Mobutu. 
This person had gone to school in Berlin, in Germany, and he was the representative of the radio in Kisangani. He was the, the leader, the managing director. But he came from the family of President Mobutu. So in our church, when we had problems with instruments, this person told me at the radio there are technicians. And the technician, when we went there, to ask, Has a chef the managing director of the radio came. When he came, I don't know what happened. I went to buy him a soft drink. He's going to help us. I was not a pastor. And the money I had was the remaining amount of money I had left. But listening to his experience with instruments, he felt like he knew, uh, he knew what he was talking about. So they came, sat, I was with my friends, started checking our mixer. I went across the street. I brought him a soft drink. He looked at me and drank the soft drink and said, I'll come back. But he tried to repair some of the things then. The next day he came, called me and said, come. He told me, he asked me, who are you? I told him my name is Gitkwaza. Where do you come from? I told him I come from South Kivu. He told me, come to see me at the radio. I went to see him at the radio. I found that he was a very important man. We sat, we talked, then I went. After a month, he came back and told me, I need to talk to you. He gave me an address of someone and he said, this man is a very rich man in Germany. But he has no child. He is aging. He asked me that when I go back to Zaire that I should find him a young man who is good looking who is going to study at the university or who is in the university will come, I'll educate him and I'll give him my wealth. Now, this is his address. We will write We'll take it to the post office and we will mail it to Germany with your pictures. So we wrote, told me how we would write. We sent the mail and the letter went. I started fasting for 40 days. That was my business, fasting and prayer. I said, let me send out the letter and I will kneel down and pray. You know, when you act holier than thou so that Satan has no way to attack you. After 40 days, we used to go to this post office to check for letters. I found a very big letter with all my letters, my documents. They had written at the top. He was called Bendestone. And that your letter arrived 10 days after the death of Bendestone. Tell me. <laughs> Tell me how you would react to that. I was young. I was 19. I saw that the whole world had come to a halt. Okay. So. All right. Then there came a young man who we used to minister together. And this young man told me, he said, I have an uncle. He's a professor in the university in Moncton in Canada. Moncton. Moncton. 
and they have asked me cyane ngo kuko yabonye amabursa abiri iye ni yundi ngo none mu bantu bose tubanamuruse ni wowe nkunda ndayiguha and he said my uncle has two scholarships one for me and another one for someone in this whole church who is my best friend and i love you more than everyone else so i'll give you the scholarship the moment he said that i said i'm going to fast his name was former he was a luba yes i told him are you sure he said it's my uncle he went to canada a long time ago so he had two forms we filled in the forms i said Someone advised me. Ati, I am a formulaire. These forms. Tu yohereze kuri post izatinda. Yohereze mukuru wa wikinchasa Rubeni azahita yohereza vuba kuko ikinchasa ni wari post azihuta. Someone told me kumera nabi cyo giye muri za 190 none. Someone told me send this to your brother in Kinshasa, Ruben, and he will send these out to Canada. It will be faster. I gave these documents to a lady we used to call her Mama Monique. She went all the way to Kinshasa. She spent the night where she was supposed to spend the night and was meant to meet Ruben the next day. <laughs> you know what I mean? That same night, the soldiers attacked that house and stole everything in that house, including the envelope with my scholarship forms. They took the envelope and a few other items in the house. I didn't know what happened. I stayed in prayer. I didn't know if Ruben got the forms. I didn't know anything. I just kept in prayer. After two months, Fuamba told me, your file never made it to Canada. I'm going to Kinshasa to sort out my passport mm. details and go. But my uncle has said, has, has sent another form. Fill it, please. But me, I'm going for Kinshasa on Monday. I'll go to the embassy, they'll give me a visa, and then I'll go to study. Okay. I filled in the form again. Hazumu. Someone came and told me I'm going to Kinshasa and your brother I know where he lives. Please, I told him please give this to my brother and ask him to send it with the DHL. This person came when he got to the airport in Kisangani at the airport, he met my brother who was going to Bukavu, gave him the envelope. My brother took the envelope to Bukavu. It never made it to Canada. Brethren, I have <laughs> suffered. This story. I haven't talked about closed doors. Bear with me to finish with closed doors. I brought the paper. I, I, I talked to my brother and asked him, why couldn't you mail it? He said, I just carried it with all the other books I had. I never mailed it. I was heartbroken. When I came back to Kisangani, Ruben wrote to someone, 
and told him, my brother is at the university in Kisangani. Take him from the campus and bring him to live with you. He was, he was leaving Kinshasa, going to represent all the customs offices in the, that part of Zaire. So I saw a customs, they used to call that company Ofida, and they came with their car. They said, we are looking for Gitkwaza. And they had a letter. I read the letter. He said, bring all your things. I went to live in the city. He had his child. His child was about to graduate the following year. I lived with them well. I prayed with them. Everything happened well. And he said, I want to do something for you. But I'll do it for you when I come back. His son had graduated. He had gone to register us at the Sorbonne University in France. We were registered. He said, I want you to stop studying here, move to France, live with my son, and keep raising him, mentoring him. They had done everything in, in secret with Ruben. I didn't know anything. So he told me, him and his wife, said, we're going to Kinshasa. When we come back, it's a surprise. They had taken my photos everything to take care of it in Kinshasa and the visa applications. I had come, one evening I was coming from prayer on the left river as they used to call it. When I came home, we didn't have mobile phones, we just had landlines. They said there is a line that has been calling for you the whole day. That they were announcing the death of that man in Kinshasa. He reached there. He was a powerful man. And they poisoned him. And with the poison, they found that all his internal organs were in failure. And that's how he died. I told my colleagues, let's go and preach in Kivu. There is nothing else left for us to do here. My God, my God. Closed doors. Nairobi. Then I went to Nairobi. After Australia, God sends me to Rwanda. So because of the heartbreak I had in my heart, coming to Rwanda took me eight months of battling with God. All the doors closed were for Europe to be saved when Paul would visit Macedonia. I, if I had gone to Canada in Moncton, or if I had gone to France in Sorbonne, I would not be here. Let's be honest and truthful. I would be a professor, probably dead or just there, living a regular life. Because in my vision, I, I wanted to be a pilot or an astronaut. 
umuntu yirirwa gutuka ya rererere nsengera gira ye 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 ibyo byose numvaga narabitinye kuba nibyo twakuriye mu bapapa basengera abantu nkumva ndashaka ibindi no nzirebera ibirere inyenyeri we grew up seeing our fathers pastoring and we knew it was a lot of hard work dealing with people's hearts. That was hard work. So I didn't want that. I just wanted to be a pilot or an astronaut. All the doors that shut in your life are not the end of your life. But it is the beginning of another life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Muriazia harafunzwe, iburaya harafunguka. Asia was shut but Europe opened. Uyu munsi twabonye ubutumwa. Today we have received the gospel. Because Paul yagiye Macedonia. Because Paul went to Macedonia. Muri ibi bihe. In this season. Wo n'umuryango w'igihe gito. It's a door of a short time. Canada njayo. I go to Canada. Abo mbabwira bafwamba. All the people like Fuamba. They come to see me based on an appointment. For them to see me, they Not because I am proud, but because God has made me who I am today. Australia. Australia. I wanted to go and study there. Into, in 2001. I went and found my host had prepared a red carpet of salt to welcome me as the president. I went to preach to around 1,000 pastors in Australia. Africans, Africans, there were not many Africans in Australia. The conference I had in 2001, there were only two black pastors from Nigeria and they had just come in to open the redeemed church. They wanted to integrate in the association of pastors. Doors opened and even the heavenly door opened. Be the door on earth or the door in heaven we have received it. Humura. So fear not. Your door has been closed for a short while. But God will open. And your life will never be the same again. So I ask that this evening you enter the door of hope. Door of faith. Enter the door of faith. Enter the door of faith. Hallelujah. 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 Act of Apostles 14, 27. Those who are going to be in the world are going to be in the world. They now when they had come and gathered the church together, they reported all that God had done with them and that he had opened the door of faith to the Gentiles. I pray that tonight God will open a door of faith for you and that you will enter in it. There is a door of faith that God has opened in your hands. And faith comes by what we hear and what you have heard. Let it create faith in your life. God has opened a new door in your life. And whatever is open for you, and for every new door that opens, it attracts new trials and new devils. Prepare yourself to fight those trials. I understood that every new door attracts its own demons. Every time there is a divine door opened, there is also a satanic door waiting. Every elevation calls demons. Get ready to fight the good fight of faith. Because your destiny is a good one. 
There are some trials you never face when you are still at the bottom. There are people who do not struggle with the trial of finding food, but they struggle with the trial of what to eat because they are dictated what to eat. We used to eat everything. And when, and when, and when we used to eat everything, but today God has given us everything to eat, but they have told us what to eat, what is healthy for us. So every level has a devil. The battles I fight today, I do not have an issue with newspapers and media houses at me. YouTube. Or YouTube channels. I don't mm -hmm. struggle with that. No. Because it is not the media that established me. No, no. Because it is not the media that established me. No, there is no media house no. that can slander my name to the extent that people will not listen to the word I have to share. Because what we share actually blesses those who do not approve of us. It inspires and elevates those who do not approve of us. They hate you, but you still bless them. So because we were not made by the media, you cannot fight the media. But let me tell you the trials we face. We struggle with the trial of finding resources that meet the visions we have. The issue of finding millions is not really a big issue for some churches. Some churches actually need billions of money. Before I was married, I before before, before I got married, I used to pray that one day I would be able to buy a radio and play music. And when I got married, I went with my wife to South Africa and I, I actually bought the radio and played music and then started wanting more. Haven't you ever prayed for a hundred dollars and God gives you a hundred and you want a thousand? That's how life is. We keep wanting more. So every level where you are, there are some trials you... you overcome. And then you find challenges that meet that new dimension. Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians 1 Corinthians 16, 8 to 9 16, 8 to 9 mm. Paul said Paul said, for a great and effective door has opened to me, and there are many adversaries. Many, many. Many, many. Opposition, forces, enemies. Look, I have many. 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 If I were to give you the enemies I fight, some of you would never make it. But every level has its adversaries. I also have levels that I have not reached at, and I cannot handle the adversaries in those levels. Watch this, Pastor. There are people who say, 
ngo uyu munda ramvuze angeza ha nje giye kurwana nawe buryo yakubwira niyo leva barimo donc nous tugambo bamuvuze ba kanje vuze ngo bamvuze ndwane nahera he urumva nabo nabo ndwanye naba nababona ariko hari abandi bo babaze ngo kanaka na kanaka na kanaka na kanaka ngo nukuri bazambona kandi imana nsenga usenze siki Haru kwe goru mureva, umunda kakugiri kibazo, haru kuko wahachiye, ukemira kumanu kahasi. Goyo, bagutu tse, mukarira na nabarira, mukawara na babara, warangizu kisubira, mwe goru kwa wisha kiribi faranga, vzinshi kugirango uba kumurima wima. Na muti nze mwana yomagamu, ndi wabivamu. There are people who come and say, so and so have gossiped about me. They are going to see me. I'm going to deal with them. But when I was to, if I was to complain about the people that talk about me, where would I start? So we will cry with those who cry, counsel them because we've been there, but go back to the level where we are praying for resources for the kingdom. Because we have many adversaries in the calling. When a door opens, expect new problems. What you are being requested is to know this. Every level requires a friend at that level. For every door that opens, it requires a friend in that door. Because there are people I am not encouraging you to break old friendships, but let me tell you this, there are levels where you need friends in those dimensions who will speak your language, who will advise you and counsel you according to that level. But the other old friends are for just laughing, for enjoying, for fun, but it's not in that dimension. Every new door needs a true brother. You need a true brother for every new door. Let's go to 2 Corinthians 2, 12 to 13. Let me read that again. When I came to the city of Troas to preach the good news of Christ, the Lord opened the door of opportunity for me. But I had no peace of mind because my dear brother Titus hadn't yet arrived. This, <inaudible> door, <inaudible> this door needs a dear brother, a Titus. You need a Titus for every level that you reach in. Paul says that even though the Lord had opened the door of opportunity for me, I need a Titus. It's not two of them, it's just one Titus. What will Titus do for you? Tito Titus Arasa. will come. Until you today, they applauded you. But be careful. That applaud, applauding was for Jesus. When Titus find them slandering you, they, they'll tell you, let's keep moving. That's how they are. Titus will help 
Balance the emotions of every situation and circumstance. When you're discouraged, Titus will come to encourage you and tell you, remember, you have people who support you. And when Titus finds you encouraged, he will tell you to always watch out because not everyone who uploads you is for you. Bavandim. Brethren, there are doors before us. Some will be shocked by Satan. They require for us to pray. In your sins, when you pray, they open. Amen. 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 In your sins, it When you pray, these doors will open. When you pray and call upon the Lord, God will work. Woo, hallelujah. 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 Prayer is a must to open the door for evangelism and everything that God has purposed in your life. Colossians 4 chapter 3 Meanwhile, praying also for us that God would open to us the door for the word to speak the mystery of Christ for which I am also in chains. Bishop, Bishop, this is what I did. When I saw that God had opened doors for us in all the continents, I was attacked in a way that I'd never been attacked in my life. When I prayed, God told me that I fight a giant of every continent. So I understood that I fight the giant of Africa because we have a ministry here in Europe, in the US, all the places where we have our ministry, five continents. When I understood this, I asked the church, from Australia, from Australia to America, to, America to, have to have an altar of 24 hours. They have prayer requests, they pray for. But every second, every hour, they have to mention my name and my wife and our children. That's how we manage to rest from the attacks of these giants. And because I cannot fight each giant and overcome, but the altar in Australia will pray for the giants in Australia and mention my name. Those in Europe will do the same. Those in the U.S. will do the same. And that's how I found rest. And I don't fight these giants alone. Anymore. So pray for me. Now you sing. And I will pray. Without forgetting your pastor. And every place where you have churches, you should have altars. And ask them to pray and mention the name of the senior pastor. It is important. Because every time the devil goes to accuse me, he'll find my name being mentioned. And it has been two years that I'm just resting. I am very well. I can sleep at the pulpit. Because there are sons and daughters mentioning my name right now. Paul said, pray for us. Hallelujah. Amen. Pray for your pastors. We pray for your doors to be open. Please pray for us to be kept. Knock and the door will be opened. Don't stop knocking on the door. 
God will answer. Have faith in the Lord. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be open to you. Yes, we have the moon. Jesus said in Luke 11, someone kept knocking at the neighbor's house. And the neighbor said, and he answered from within mm. and said, do not trouble me. The door is now shut and my children are with me in bed. I cannot rise and give to you. Yes, sir. I'm going to ask you. 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 Jesus said, I say to you, Though he will not rise and give to him because he is his friend, yet because of his persistence, he will rise and give him as many as he needs. God eventually opens the door when we pray. Milango ya gereza ikafunguka Milango ya gereza ikafunguka Paulo Nasira Wali Oba Paulo Nasi Jameni Wali Oba Milango ya Gereza Ika Funguka Milango ya Gereza Baba Ika Funguka Ukipata Matatizo Shetani Aki Kusonga Majaribu ya Shetani Mama ya kikusonga, usisa hau kuomba, mungu atasikia, uombe kwa bidi kama, paulo na sira, paulo na sira, waliomba, paulo na sira, jameni waliomba, milango ya gereza, uhu, ikafu. Milango ya gereza Yes, we Ikafuka Vijana wa leo Mukiomba Wa mama wa leo Na nyinyi mukiomba Madirisha ya mbinguni Ya tafunguka Ikiwa mukiomba kama Paulo na sira Paulo na Nasira wali omba Paulo Nasira jameni wali omba milango ya gereza ikafunguka milango ya gereza oh oh ikafunguka hallelujah 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 Pray again. Because there are doors that will open. Paul and Silas prayed. And the doors opened. Jesus. 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 When we call upon the Lord, the doors from prison will open. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! The doors to No! We use the doors of the ancient times in your family. We use the doors of the ancient times in your family. Hallelujah! 
Nimurova, Yomiyang with a king who cut down. Gonimena could be Hindi, Zobzib Zuma, Ikabi Menagura, who king Jeramumare Boyao, in Jira. He breaks the chains, he breaks the open chains, the metal chains and the metal doors, so they are open and you may enter. Imiyango Yosaira Kinswe. All the doors that were shut. In the times of your fathers and forefathers. Let them be open in your season. Let them be open in your family. 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 Amen. Give me three minutes and I'll close. There are things we need to pray. There are things that are happening here. Jesus. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Hey! Hallelujah! Ndimuri Kenya. When I was in Kenya, God had given me ministry. I worked as a volunteer. I didn't start the ministry. I would go to a church. I was a good member of the church and a worshiper. Then I would go and preach on the streets. In 93, I preached in the streets of Nairobi. In Uhuru Park in 93. And there were times I would there was a pastor, an American pastor. He was a friend of mine. He loved me. I was a member of his church. He came from a very rich family. His father was a millionaire. Calvary. He had given him the capacity to open, of God. to open Calvary Muriza Assemblies Singapore, of God Za Kenya. in Singapore, in Kenya. I was in his church and I would go and preach. I was an evangelist who was always preaching on the streets. I, I would sleep wherever the night would find me. So he called me took me to his house. He had a beautiful apartment by Yaya Center near Ngongo Road. He told me I have prayed and my heart has convinced me that I have to send you to the US go to Seattle you will study there for nine months. Then you will come back. And when you come back, we'll make you the overseer of all our ministries in Africa, from South Africa to Cairo. Then he told me, you see this fridge. He opened the fridge. There was a lot of food. He had a TV screen. At the time, he had an email. They had just begun. He had a big computer. And he was telling me, I can send out a thousand mails and they will go everywhere. And I was wondering how to do it. It's an electronic email, and he taught me all these things to do with technology. There was a wonderful car there, and he told me, This will be yours. 
this car. We will work in the ministry together for three months. Then I'll send you to Seattle. I looked at him and I told him it's not possible. I said, what? I said, it's not possible. I said, I have a ministry that will reach all over the world. I had spent seven days homeless. On those seven days, I was only drinking coffee, no food, and I was homeless. And the, the trial I was facing. Satan opened the door so that I confuse it with God's door and lose God's calling for my life. And he told me, Jonathan told me, Have you lost your mind? This is a once in a lifetime opportunity. There was a Kenyan man whom they had started the ministry, whom they worked together. He said he asked this from me and I refused. But I feel like it is you I should give this to. I said no. He said I'll give you a week. Let's meet and talk about it. After a week I refused again. Then I came to Rwanda and faced the challenges and trials. Okay, then one day, one day, we were in the apostolic coalition in Dallas. And there are so many apostles from all over the world and most of them are our brothers who are white. In the 12 people who are seated in front, by the grace of God, I was seated there. Are you listening? Our president, the coalition president, introduced me. Because we had new apostles from Brazil and other places. And he introduced me. When he introduced me, the, the friend, the pastor from Kenya, he was seated at the back, way back. He said, that's my son, that's my son. When I looked, He wanted to come in front but the ushers couldn't allow him to come in front. He waited. Briefly, I lead him in the coalition. He left the ministry and started another ministry as well. He left many churches, the Calvary Assembly of God, and he started his own ministry. I was one of the people who had to approve his membership in the coalition as a prophet. So let me ask you. If I had accepted his offer that day, and then they sent him the next day, what would have happened to me? I would be in Nairobi confused. He came and told me, my son, I beg you, go to Seattle. I have a very big land. I have a TV station. I have a radio station. Come and minister all the times you want. I told him, my father, I don't have the time and for that. that. And truly, I didn't find time. To this day, he sent me a email. Said, I'm waiting for you to come and This is an offer that has stood for four years. 
ntukacogore ngo wibwe icyo wahaye komeza kwiyereka imana yaguhaye do not be discouraged and lose what god has given you hold fast on the vision don't take the beans and replace them with the birthright uyu munsi umuryango urasanukinze Today it seems the door is shut. Jonathan yansabye iyo offre ndarahanze. Jonathan gave me the offer when I was homeless. Aba Kenya banyambuye amafaranga yose na narashe muri hotel barayiba ngarutse baranyirukana abanda hanze. The Kenyans had stolen. Imisirindi. The Kenyans had stolen all the money I had paid and I had in the hotel and they had to put me on the street for 7 days homeless. One day I was so hungry. Njya gusaba umusore wakoraga kuri reception saa 5 z'ijoro cafe kugira ngo numve ko ariko nyoye cafe yari impitane. I went to ask for the young man who was working at the reception for coffee and drinking coffee after going hungry for so many days it almost killed me. Satan akanyongore. And Satan would whisper to me. Wabonye frigo yo kwa Jonathan. You saw the fridge in Jonathan's Iri house. Iriya you see the car? See the house? Going to the US? For nine months? To go and study? And represent the whole of Africa? No. I said, devil, no. God told me. There is something God told me. That I will prepare the bride of Christ. So I pray a blessing for each one of you. That you may not have problems. Because Jesus is with you. Your door, your first door, is your heart. Open your heart. Open your heart to Jesus. And he will use you to do great things. He will use you to do great things. And he says, behold, I stand at the door. Revelation 3.20 and I knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I'll come into him and dine yes, with him. Jesus him. wants to dine with you this evening. Shake off the door. Open the door. Because this is what will happen. When he comes in you, he will allow you to also enter in his house. In John 10, 7. He says, he says, Verily, verily, I tell you that I am the door. I am the door. If anyone goes through me, they will be saved. They will enter and go out and find a pasture.